Welcome to this introduction to NSF's e-learning modules on data integrity, where we will take a high-level look at the subject of data integrity to understand why it matters so much, and we'll also explain the structure of our e-learning modules. Let us start with a really clear understanding of what data integrity is not. Napoleon Bonaparte reportedly said that history is a set of lies agreed upon. We can look at some of the more extreme examples of data integrity fraud and we can determine that the staff and clearly sometimes the management of these companies did define a set of lies to be agreed upon. Examples include volumes of production the site is not capable of, results issued for testing that was never undertaken, different volumes of materials added compared to the registered quantities. In these examples, companies have decided to act in a way which does not have integrity, which is not dependable. But we are doing this data integrity training because your company has decided that your records shall not be a set of lies, but instead they shall be a true reflection of the work that has been undertaken. It doesn't matter where you work within a pharmaceutical products life cycle. Throughout that life cycle, different elements of good practice will apply. We know them as good manufacturing practice, good distribution practice, clinical, laboratory, pharmacovigilance. But each of them will apply at different stages within the life cycle. And throughout that life cycle, the rules for data integrity will be applicable and will underpin all of those other good practices. When we think about a task that we do in everyday life, it has no real structure about it. And as such, it doesn't matter if I'm wrapping a parcel, if I wrap it differently today than I do tomorrow. Or if I write a note for myself in a different style, using a different piece of paper, using a different pen. It doesn't matter because it is unique to me and the output will always be different. But within the pharmaceutical industry, we have structures and systems that enable the output to always be the same. We have controlled equipment, material, standards. We have very clear written instructions with capable people that have been trained fully. And we have a process which is tested, validated, to ensure that it is always the same. And within that structure, we are able to deliver two outputs for every task that we do. There's the output for which we are ultimately paid. It's the product or a test result. And then there's the records that support that activity. And it's with these records that we're interested in the quality of the data. Most data integrity problems are not as dramatic as the extreme examples we considered earlier. But less significant issues can still cause massive disruption. Issues which have the potential to be interpreted as fraudulent and also the failure to ensure effective measures to minimise the risk of data integrity failures. Within a company, these can lead to heightened oversight from the regulator and then the company has to redirect their people into dealing with the problems rather than dealing with routine work. To avoid these types of issues, we can look to the global regulatory advice and there is a clear common view on the requirements for your records and any data that is generated. Your data is always needed to be complete, consistent and accurate. Complete means that I have everything, not just the nice bits which pass. Consistent means that it always tells the same story, regardless of who is looking at it and when they look at it, it will always be the same. Accurate is the truth, the correct answer. And in 2018, the MHRA added two new terms to their definition. The MHRA is the UK's regulator. They added that the data needs to be trustworthy and reliable. Now, adding trustworthy and reliable is actually quite in line with other countries' approaches towards data integrity. But they are challenging in that they are less tangible. They're hard to test for. It's difficult to envisage a test to see if something is trustworthy. 
but you can certainly tell when it's not trustworthy, when there are elements that don't add up. So this expectation applies throughout the entire data life cycle. We make sure that these requirements are met from the first moment we put pen to paper or a piece of laboratory equipment first captures a number. Through some sort of processing, be it on our calculators or within a computer program, through the reviews, the reporting, throughout that retention period, right the way through to when the data is eventually disposed of, it needs to be complete, consistent, accurate, trustworthy and reliable. And to achieve this, your data needs to be created in line with Alcoa, A-L-C-O-A, Alcoa. Alcoa is that your data is A, attributable, so we know who it was that did the work, L, legible, so we can actually read whatever it was that a person or a machine recorded, C, contemporaneous, this is a slightly more difficult word, but it means that the record reflects the date and time it was made, and that in turn reflects the date and time the work was done. O stands for original, or we allow true copy. Original means it's the first time that the recording was made, and true copy means it's a tested copy that ensures that the copy is exactly the same as the original, which is maintained in the format it was originally created in. The final A is for accurate, and we already know that this means it's the truth, it is the correct answer. We will look at this in more detail during the training, but remember all the time we're focused on ensuring that the right building blocks are in place, as required by the regulators, to protect the patients who should be at the heart of our operations. The Americans, the US FDA, have stated that ensuring data integrity is an important part of industry's responsibility and the competent authority's ability to protect the public health. So throughout, let us keep that in our minds as we learn about this very important topic. In Module 1, we'll look at the completion of records. We'll look at the terms and definitions that everyone needs to know and we'll look at what it takes to complete the record to review and approve it. In Module 2, we'll look at some specialist considerations, auditing and self-inspection, as well as local management oversight through Gemba Walks. We'll look at the common deficiencies and the different types of issues by discipline. And finally, we'll look at technical controls, what's required for computerised systems. The final module looks at management requirements and we'll look at the culture that it takes to sustain good data integrity, a risk-based approach and data governance. The risk-based approach is how to identify potential issues and the data governance is how you oversee the entire activity. The final part will be to look at the organisational controls, the procedures and training that underpin all of this effort and activity. These modules will be published in the coming months, so please do follow this link to register.